Go. All right, you guys, so welcome to Bear Hill here at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. My name is Sarah, and I invite you to come join me in front of our 20-year-old Andy and Bear Chester's exhibit. I'll be giving a brief introduction on him today and a bit of a chat on him, so if you want to learn more about South America's only bear, <laughs> spectacle bears because of a common facial marking on them. They typically have cream colored circles around their eyes giving them the look that they are wearing glasses or spectacles. However, if you look at Chester here, he doesn't quite have that definitive marking as all the other bears do. That's because Andean bears vary a lot in their markings. Just like humans all have different fingerprints, each bear has their own individualized markings on them. So at one point, South America thought they had two different bears since there were so many different colorations of them. So down, you can find the Andean bears down in South America, specifically the northwestern parts, so from Venezuela to Bolivia. And as you can imagine, in that long range of area, you can find a lot of habitats down there. So Andean bears like to hang out in grasslands, scrubland, and forest mountains, or mountain forests, I should say, that are usually thousands of feet above sea level. So in that habitat, you can find a lot of variation in foods. Andean bears' diets consist mostly of berries, um, grasses, and a lot of vegetation. They actually have a diet that is less than 5% of meat, which is what we're not used to here in North America. We think of grizzlies and everything. They're really big meat eaters. Um, so Andean bears are the second world's largest vegetarian bear behind the infamous bamboo-loving panda bear. So Chester here loves his um, bananas and everything here at the zoo. That's what he mostly gets along with apples. So he gets all the necessary diet requirements. And sometimes he'll eat small rodents or insects when he does crave meat. But, in, but with his enrichment, he gets peanuts and peanut butter. That is Chester's favorite treat. Now how many of you like to eat peanuts with the shells on? Is anyone? Do you like to eat peanuts with the shells on? Well, I personally don't and neither does Chester. So if you ever get to see Chester eat a peanut, it's quite impressive. He'll stick the whole peanut in his mouth, shell and all, roll it around his mouth, he'll crack, and next thing you know, two perfect halves of a peanut shell are falling out of his mouth and he's eating the nut. I don't even think I could do that with my child. So, so besides his peanut cracking skills, Andean bears have a lot of handy tactics that help them out in the wild. For one, does anyone here like to build forts or tree houses? I really like to. Yeah, you do. Well, Chester here loves to build forts. So in the wild, Andean bears will push over bamboo sticks or tree branches in order to make a platform to stand on. The purpose of that platform is in order to reach food that is out of their grasp or to give them a place to sleep for a few days. So if they can't reach that food even with the platform, they have these really long, sharp claws that you can kind of see. I have seen their trying to stuff across the exhibit for you. Those claws allow him to climb trees really easily. So he's a great climber. He's also a great swimmer. So another thing that sets these bears apart are their personalities. So Andean bears are really inquisitive by nature. They're very curious bears. And I've been told by their keepers that enrichment, their favorite enrichment, is a challenge. So they love food that is encased with something. So like a cone ball filled with peanut butter is probably hands down Chester's favorite thing to do. He loves the challenge of trying to figure out how to get his food. And if that's not enough, he was once given a toilet paper roll. He unrolled all the toilet paper, then proceeded to collect it and put it in his bed so it gave him a nice little pillow to sleep on. So some of you may not know that Andean bears are actually very unique compared to other bears. Does anyone here know how many ribs a typical bear has? How many pair of ribs? I know it's a hard question, but I don't know if anyone's an expert. Thousand? Well, the answer is 14. So the black bears and polar bears all have 14 pairs of ribs. However, Chester here only has 13. Andean bears have one less pair of ribs for whatever reason. We don't know exactly why this physical difference is apparent. It's just a mystery to us. So here in North America, all our bears basically hibernate. We go through four seasons. And in the winter, the food supply is really low, so they mostly just sleep it off. While Chester here does not hibernate. In South America, the climate allows food supply to be abundant throughout the year, so he'll remain active and his personality builds up all year round. The 
the last thing that sets Andean bears apart from other bears is their snout. So if you look at Chester's snout, he has a smaller snout than all the other bears. That's because Chester is the last short-faced bear um, from the subfamily of short-faced bears. So short-faced bears were prevalent about 10,000 years ago, but they've slowly died off, and Andean bears are the only ones that exist today. So by short face, I mean that his snout looks more like a dog snout than, say, a polar bear's, which you can imagine is very long. So just because the Andean bears are the only surviving some family of short-faced bears doesn't mean that they're going to be around for much longer. Unfortunately, Andean bears are listed as vulnerable. And that is very detrimental to South America if these guys do go extinct. Does anyone know what a keystone species is? Anyone in biology class know? Not me. <laughs> Keystone species is defined as a species that if it was introduced or removed from an environment, it would have a great impact. Andean bears are such a species. So if you think of them as a very vegetative bear, um, they eat a lot of that fruits and vegetables. And as they walk, since they are solitary animals and can go very far for food and go cover a long range of area, they disperse the seeds of those plants through their feces. So if Andean bears were to go extinct, a lot of because plant populations would suffer in return. So here at the Cincinnati Zoo, we don't want to see Chester or his friends go extinct, so we just ask that some of us do small things at home that will help keep these guys around. So does anyone know the three R's in conservation? Anyone? Recycle. Recycle's the first one. Anyone know the other two? Reuse. Exactly. Reuse, reduce. Unless, there you go, buddy. You got it. So recycle, reuse, reduce. So here at the zoo, we really make recycling easy. Um, we have bins set up for you guys to throw away your bottles and everything. You can even recycle your map on your way out. We even have bins for you guys to recycle your cell phones at. That will keep a lot of the toxins out of the environment. We ask that you reduce the amount of disposable products that you guys use at home. So instead of using that paper plate for dinner, we ask that you use you know, a ceramic plate that's re um, reusable and washable. And if you already do the three R's, we thank you for that. And you're still wondering what else you guys can do. We have a program called the Project Saving Species here at the Cincinnati Zoo. And you can donate to that um, either the next time you buy a ticket here at the Cincinnati Zoo or you go online at CincinnatiZoo.org and make a donation. What that does is it's a direct link to the conservation programs around the world that help save Andean bears, polar bears, and a whole bunch of other species. A small donation goes a far away. So as we've been staying here, some of you may have noticed the sign that is outside Chester's exhibit. So it does mentioned that if he does have any leg um, skin condition, he does get hot spots basically on an annual um, basis around August typically. Unfortunately, not due to a lack of effort of trying to figure it out, we don't know the cause of those hot spots. But I can assure you that Chester is getting the utmost care by our veterinarian staff here at the Cincinnati Zoo. And right now he gets a little relief spray to keep the irritation down. And he's still his playful self. He'll go swimming every once in a while. He was I was told earlier doing just that. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for sticking around and learning about Chester the Bear here. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll be sticking around for a few more minutes. Feel free to ask any and all questions. I welcome them. If not, you guys have a great day here at the Cincinnati Zoo. Keep your ears open for more chats around the zoo.